on this episode of the round table, we had to talk goat talk today. It's uh, it was fun to kind of talk some sports, Danny. Yep, goat talk, modern modern day sports. That's all I got. Trey Way. Yeah, thank you guys for having me on and allowing me to uh, talk about who I believe is the goat of each sport. <laughs> Trey. Um. Yeah, we talked a lot about LeBron. LeBron's the the goat, as you could say from one of his memes. It's a good episode though. <laughs> yeah. LeBron, Tom Brady talk, Aaron Rodgers talk. It's a really good catch up on just everything sports because we like we have a lot of legends retiring, even JJ Watt. So it's good to break this down. Yeah, and usually you're you know hearing from us on like super deep topics and money and marketing. But look, we all watch sports and everyone has thought about these things. So you get to hear us discuss yeah. it. It's a good show. And let's go to it. On Roundtable Podcast, I'm your boy Corey G at Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Special guest in the building, Tyler Treadway. Happy birthday, Dirty 31. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, brought to you by Max Effort, Sam Adams, shout out. Pre-extreme. Extreme. Yeah. <laughs> I, my favorite part of that video is Trey's part. Yeah, it Because I didn't expect the gremlin. The gremlin. Yeah. Pre-extreme. Well, Trey, extreme. Trey, Trey, you should talk about what was the inspiration for that. What, the what inspiration for that? Yes. Yeah, where'd that yeah, come please. from, I'm just thinking of you like on Call of Duty, like... Or something like that, like talking <laughs> shit. And he just voice. heard the octaves yeah, so of our a, voice, and he went to the other one. There's an NFT project where their whole lore, like behind the project, the storytelling of the project okay. was voices that they talked in on Twitter spaces. Okay. And they used the gremlin voices. Yes. <laughs> I, I knew it was that. a gremlin voice. Yeah. and That's one of my favorite movies ended, growing th- up. Those NFTs ended up being worth like, you know, like $10,000, though, all off some gremlin voices. So I fuck, I It was the most ate up shit of all time. Yeah. I fuck with Trey's gremlin voice, though. Yeah, thank I, you. I think that's very marketable. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm going to throw it out here because we got Treadway in the house. Is LeBron undoubtedly the GOAT now because he beats Kareem? Is there is it is it shut down just what it is? Is it indisputable? Now, people can say shit, but when you beat Kareem, but you're still playing for probably another two to three years, I would think, because like, you're still scoring like 30 points a game. Like, can anybody really dispute that LeBron's the the greatest now? Troy. I feel like he just has some thoughts. Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> so, so this is super interesting because I've never been the biggest. I'm a fan of LeBron, the person, but not the basketball player. Mm-hmm. Just like the whole – I'm not a Cavs fan, so him yeah. going to Miami didn't bother me, but the decision Neither. thing yeah. was kind of annoying. Um, and then he went to Miami, and I'm a Thunder fan, and so that was the Thunder's big rival. They could never get past the hump. Um, and I didn't really like the way that he went about that. But then when he came back to Cleveland, it kind of started to rewrite that narrative. Agreed. Then he won it in Cleveland, went to L.A. But the thing about LeBron that is the the craziest thing to me is he's a kid from Akron that grew up in a, a single-parent household, and he's never been in trouble in his yeah. entire career. And he lived up to the hype. And he lived up – you know. I was listening to Bill Simmons this morning, and he's a Celtics guy, so he's not like yeah. the biggest LeBron fan. But it's like if you can't even just appreciate, like I'm always going to be Jordan, Kobe over LeBron. But it doesn't even matter. Like you just have to be able to appreciate what he's done and to be touted as the chosen one. And then to all these years later, like we all watched it, his whole career unfold, and he lived he up to did it. everything that was ever expected of him and more. And he hits it, and it's almost like – well, what's next? Because people are still, like, searching. I mean, as a Jordan Kobe fan, I'm still searching for reasons to be like, well, LeBron hasn't done X, but he's done it all. And he's done it all being a class act, and he's done it being a his phenomenal. His business crushed it, too. Yeah, you know, he's got – he's doing great things for his, his kids and his family and, and everything, and he, there's nothing to hate about the man, right? He's, he's just awesome. Yeah. Um, and that was, like, the worst part was he sets the record on my birthday. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like this dude man and it's just like i think about it and i'm like man he's been doing this at a high level forever and and how can you how can you be pissed off that at him? so that well so that's my point is like at some point you're uh deegan said something about, or dustin said some quote about when you're fighting a gorilla you can't just give up you have to give up when the gorilla's tired eventually he's gonna wear people out to the point where you can't deny it anymore. So, yeah, you can say Jordan got more rings, Kobe, whatever, but the body of work's so impressive. And then 
you play with your kid it's mind blowing it's just it's just an icing topper mm -hmm. right but to me it shows longevity the way you take the game he's increased his shooting skills like he's just like continued to deliver whenever the expectation is at the highest level so I tweeted this morning, which, you know, I'm big on Twitter again. Shout out Trey. Yeah. He got me motivated a long time ago to get big on Twitter. <laughs> and it's like one of those things where I don't think you can dispute it anymore. Mm -hmm. You can always bring up the championship stuff. That's, But it's not that he's not a champion. He did it in his home. You know, it's like I just think two more years, he's going to separate himself even more on the points. He's going to do the LeBron with his kid. And, dude, who's to say he doesn't play with the other one too? I'm telling you. I just think, to your point, what's next? That guy's not – it's going to be hard for him to hang it up when he can still score 30 a night because he's just that guy. I don't know, dude. I just think it's going to be, like, a clear distinction if it's not now, very soon, where people can't dispute it anymore. Yeah, and I think that – somebody tweeted last night, is is LeBron the greatest Laker of all time? And I'll, I'll, that's I don't know time. about that. Yeah. He's not even top – I mean, he's not even the top three greatest Laker of all no, time. No, he's only got one ring with the Lakers. And, and and what Magic did, and what Shaq did, and what, and what Kobe, Kobe did. did. <laughs> like, you're never going to be the greatest Laker. But, like you said, we're searching for straws of reasons to not call exactly. him the greatest player of all time. And I just think, like, yeah, you can go to championships, but that doesn't help when people, like, talk about Bill Russell. Yeah. So it's yeah, like yeah. you you can only pick and choose so many arguments until you just admit that he's Well, the Bill Russell had, like, ten, so you can't even really – I mean – right then he would be the, the cleared best basketball player of all time. Right, if that was the only measure. So, uh, let's go to the Akron kid yeah. first. Trey. Um, I think it's amazing because, like, what just what like LeBron, like how Treadway explained, like, what LeBron represents. Um, Hell yeah. Like, not only just in basketball, sports in general, but just, like, for Akron, too, like, being from Northeast Ohio. Like, um, for me, it's hard to, like, to say LeBron's not the greatest of all time. you got to be so prideful being from that area to have a guy, yeah. a kid from those circumstances go do that. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be the greatest of all time. Like, You've always thought he was the greatest, though, right? Yeah, you didn't have another wrong. perspective. I mean, I think MJ's <laughs> – Yeah. I love the mentality of MJ. Um, yeah. I definitely like MJ like more as a player. Yeah. That's for sure. I think the body of work, like – because MJ obviously has a great business, but I would say MJ's outside of basketball life is a little bit rough from time to time, and it's pretty <laughs> documented where – LeBron, on the other hand, has a body of work, especially with the guys around him, like Maverick and those guys. Never had any scandals. Too, exactly. Or like he's that. done a really yeah. good job, and it seems like obviously he's kept his family together. Like those things that normally are pitfalls for people of that success level have not been for LeBron. In Besides the Hummer thing, that's yeah, the last that's time he it. got in trouble. Yeah, that was high school. What that was, was high school. What was it? What was it? His mom bought him a Hummer. Before he, before he, uh, before he was done with high school, when you couldn't do like, you know, uh, it was like deals or yeah, yeah, take that money. And he, or whatever. he basically couldn't play one of the games or something, yeah. but it was like messed up. But he wasn't going to college anyway. Yeah, from my standpoint, I mean, dude, when did he debut? Two thousand three, like he was a rookie. Two thousand three, yeah. he was drafted. I was in fucking kindergarten. Like <laughs> I think about that, like I was in kindergarten. I was living out of high state, and basically, yeah, growing up every year watching him like in the All Star games. Like every time I think of basketball, because again, like I'm not the biggest basketball guy, but if I think basketball and remember highlights of like watching shit, it's always been LeBron. Yep. Like that's who, you know. I think anyone who hears NBA probably across the world, they're automatically thinking LeBron James. Like I don't. I think it's hard not to argue also that he might be one of the greatest athletes across any sport to ever play. Yes. Like he can – in in my eyes, I think he's the only basketball player that could have went and played in the NFL. Mm. Yeah. I think he could have went and played probably, you know, any other crazy fucking sport like that and yeah. probably would have been really good because he was also – that talented. He was an all-state all wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. So like – because most of those dudes in the NBA, they could not even go transfer. They would look so unathletic on the football field. Yep. But I think LeBron, I really wish like he would have <coughs> even thought about that. But he was fucking dominating. So. Well, just the expectations of and then being that young. Bryce Harper has done similar where he they called him the chosen one. He didn't even finish fucking high school. He goes Juco as a junior, bro. He leaves high school and then to go win world championships and hit all these home runs. Like, that's so hard to do when Sports Illustrated puts you on the cover and says, you're supposed to be this type of guy. I mean, I just couldn't even, I, I couldn't imagine that pressure. Um, and for LeBron to rise up to that, no one else, including Jordan, had that type of pressure. Dude, 
even when he came out of North Carolina, he was revered as a great player, but no one thought he was going to like probably like take over the NBA. They, I mean, you know, and he, Nike basically got created off Jordan's back mm-hmm. because of the whole scandal with his shoes. Like his body of work was crazy, but he didn't have the same expectation levels. Uh, LeBron had those from a freshman in high school on basically. So that's just like a whole different level of pressure, bro. And then yeah. also, if you think about how he grew up, who's managing that? You don't know how. I mean, dude, if I that would have been me and my trailer, my mom. What was my mom going to tell me? Like, <laughs> yeah. How do you manage that? Oh, you're on SI as it, walking into school as a senior. They're calling you the chosen one. I mean, yeah, I would have thought my wiener was big, but she's <laughs> like, but you're Hot. not. You, but yeah, but you're not like. You know what I'm saying? Like that would be so difficult, bro. Yeah. Go ahead, mm-hmm. Danny. Your turn. I mean, I'm not a huge NBA guy, but like I just remember, I remember watching Bryce Harper YouTube videos of him taking BP. Yeah, because like you just knew he was different. He was a fucking man amongst boys. (laughs) Like you just like that's the only other person that's like similar to that was being deemed this guy real early. But even his pressure wasn't the same as LeBron's. Yeah, yeah. And then watching like highlight like highlight videos of uh, LeBron in high school was like absolutely incredible i thought it was like the coolest thing in the world i'm such an idiot i did not go to the state finals four years in a row because i was drinking i think too much on campus like (laughs) an idiot (laughs) but like ag you know lebron's playing at the at the shot oh yeah yeah, i'll catch him next year yeah four years in a row (laughs) well all right so while we're on the goat talk you know is you know we talk like I talked about LeBron. He had these expectations, you know, coming out of high school. Let's talk about the guy who also just retired, who had probably the lowest expectations that no one ever thought would be as great as he was in Tom Brady. Yeah, fast. lasting, you know, however fucking long that was. Think he's done? Seems uh, like he is. I think he is. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've got my huge crypto conspiracy about. Yeah, that. yeah. yeah. I, I think How about the cons- the picture he posted? So was that real? <laughs> he's wilding out. Yeah, the one that, that Will weird. Compton like tweeted back at. So good. Endelman had a post about it too, I think. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, he's. Uh, I don't even know where uh, to go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's but, re- let, restart your question. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> let's, so let's, is try, it, let's do a do over. So, yeah. it's honestly like my main thought is is obviously I've been lucky to grow up watching LeBron, probably one of the most dominant like NBA players of all time. Tom Brady is a fucking legend in mm. himself, and watching all these crazy athletes basically play all at one time. Now those guys, that generation of like Peyton, it's moving on. Eli, all bent Big Ben, all those guys who were studs that you knew were gonna always give you a great game are now leaving. And now it's weird to think about like who's gonna be that next wave because mm-hmm. you look at Joe Burrow, Allen, like the Mahomes and stuff like that. They are. They're that in Lamar. their own way. You can't even like compare those groups of guys compared to the old guys because the games are no. so different. But it's crazy to think that Tom, because the NBA has changed, but the NFL, the way that game's played, has yeah. drastically changed. Well, I'm on my third wave. You got to remember, I grew up watching Joe Montana. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Dan Marino. Like, and I've collected all those cards. And then I see this wave of guys with Drew Brees, Peyton. You know, and then you see Joe. Like, that's what's so interesting. That's what, another reason I know Treadway's a huge Burrow fan. But I'm telling you, Joe Montana and Tom Brady, shit don't look that different. Joe Burrow is real close to that. So as a kid, watching those guys growing up, and I'm a Steeler fan, so but I was too young for Bradshaw. So I missed that group, right? But then Montana kind of took it over. The pocket, the just ice cold veins, all that. Tom Brady, very similar. And then you rock now with Joe. It's like you see that. But I was also a huge Randall Cunningham fan. He was one of the first real mobile quarterbacks that was fucking balling. And in Philly, my dad was an Eagles fan. Mm-hmm. So I see Jalen Hurts. I see Patrick Mahomes. And I see that being carried on with that style. And Lamar is just an absolute freak show. So it's like there's guys in each one of these groups of quarterbacks that have represented styles of play. And one... Tom Brady, though, because of the championships, you know, because t- Montana's got four. He goes, what, seven? Yeah. I just don't know if any of these – it's kind of like the Bill Russell thing. I just don't know if anybody's going to go do yeah. that again. It, probably not. Especially, well, if you think about mm-hmm. it, like the quarterback position is so hard. Think about how many guys – get drafted every year that they talk about he's going to be like the next great many few of them maybe play one or two years and it's all yeah. fucking on to the next guy but he's done it for so long 
and like all the Super Bowl wins, like they were like close fucking games. He was in like ten that. Super Bowls. Yeah, like he it's was basically Bill Russell shit. Yeah, and he's like one of the only guys who probably everyone knew that if there was two minutes left, Tom Brady was still going to win. Like if there's less than two minutes, Tom Brady's going to win. It's part, but so that's how people think about Jordan. I just don't know if that's how people think about LeBron. So Tom Brady's got the ball with two minutes. You're fucked. Jordan's got the ball coming down with 30 seconds. You're fucked. That's why those guys are here. LeBron, although he's a champion, I think it's the body of work that's so respected that you can't deny that he's the greatest ever. But those guys, you feel different about those two individuals because of that. Mm -hmm. And I think Joe Burrow got that same vibe. But why, though? I think because they just... It's that intangible. It's like... It's because they just keep producing. I mean... Tom's proven what seven out of ten, seventy percent. You know, I mean, Montana was four for four. Yeah. I mean, I think it's those guys that Jordan was six for six. So that's what it is. It's weird because you're like, oh, well, the guy lost a few super, you know, or lost a few NBA championships, but he didn't have any, any help back in the day either. He yeah. got there eight or ten times. So anyway, it's just it's all situational, but that's what it is. If 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 he leaves it and he gets six or seven, then there's no discussion. But there's always going to be a discussion because of that. Where Tom Brady, there's no discussion. It's just flat out. What yeah. what I hold against LeBron and probably – What I hold against it, it, <laughs> yeah. Hold in your heart, right, right, right. This is just full transparency. Like yeah. I, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that LeBron's the greatest player of all time, but he probably should be. But wh why I think Jordan and Kobe are better – is because I watched Kobe Bryant take two free throws with a torn Achilles. Yeah, I watched him, his body deteriorate on the ground, on the the court, so that he could give the fans everything he could. Right, and something came out the other day, and it was like, you know, LeBron's been resting all these things, which he's thirty eight, he should. Yeah, but somebody said he's like, playing the game smart. Right, but uh, somebody said about Kobe it's like this might be the only time they get to see me play why would I rest yeah he ain't gonna take the night off and it's I like yeah. alright that's uh, same as Jordan right Strategy. why would I sit out when when somebody saved Kobe up Kobe got whole that life? from Jordan because Jordan's the exactly. same shit there's some kid that paid eight dollars that's sitting in the nosebleeds and he came to see me tonight I gotta give him a show and LeBron's looking at him more like a business and, and his body because it's paying him 50 million a year mm -hmm. just on the court and he's probably gonna get an extra Jordan was like I forget how old he was and he played for the Wizards, but he was 38. Probably, yeah, but he was broke down at that. But he would have yeah. a game where he'd score 20 and then he'd score six. Yeah. I mean, LeBron's light years ahead of his athleticism at, at the same age. So it's like, you know, LeBron's played the game better. Yeah. I mean, long game better. And, and neither one of those is right. Like Kobe's not right for tearing his Achilles and hitting free throws. But to, to me, gr growing up as a kid from Southeast Ohio, it's like I've had, you know, a few chances to go see LeBron. I went, I went to five Cavs games and he played in one. Ooh, that so it's would, like, would leave you a bad taste, I guess. You know, yeah. I never got to see Kobe or, or uh, Jordan play in person, but it's like, okay, these guys are getting every night, right? Mm -hmm. They don't take nights off. It's it's the same thing as what LeBron's doing. They're just kind of amplifying a little bit. I think what felt a little different about Jordan, too, is because the access to the games is way less. So, like, it, you got to figure, when you're a kid, and I love basketball, you know, I'm like Annan's age, Saturday uh, or Christmas Day, like there's only one game on. Mm -hmm. uh, my channel, I could only get a game. Like mm -hmm. there wasn't the NBA ticket. There's no social media. The single focus was on whoever they were building up. So if you know like in all markets, basically there's one fucking game that's on. That's it. It's Jordan and the Knicks. It's the Bulls Knicks. Like that, that exposure and then he delivered on that platform, which is not that... You know, LeBron wouldn't if that was the case. But I think the times were just different on how it was being showcased, too. Now, you have a highlight. It can go viral way different, right? But it's like, I don't know. It was just like, I don't know if that or this now makes it better or worse. But it was just it was just really different on how all those guys were showcased. So what, which way would you guys pick, then? Would you, try, would you try to go the LeBron route for longevity and more like a smart business decision? Or would you rather fucking hanging on the line and be on the court or be on the baseball field like fucking Cal Ripken or whatever who was on the field forever. Every game. Roger M or Mickey Mantle was another one I think. Was yeah. Crazy. So, yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's a good question. You? Cool. Um, 
That's a great question. Or, uh, for me, I, I would go the MJ Kobe route. That's mm. for that's me though, because I know it would eat at me being on the bench. Yeah, see, knowing actually, that I could at least be there, you know, well, a contributor. You know, I think uh, a younger me would say that for sure, but I think me right now, I would go the Deion Sanders route, just being fucking flashy as fuck, because why not? <laughs> you know, he went uh, none of the above. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, that's the route I would right go. in. Yeah, yeah, I because like I think because dude, like. LeBron, whenever, because if he tries like the showboats or whatever, and he he's like too theatrical, yeah, and it, that yeah, that that, tar- genuine, that tarnishes yeah. him more than like because yeah. with Kobe Columbia and MJ, is. you knew you knew that they were killers, but then if LeBron, LeBron's like too bougie, he's too bougie. Like whenever he yeah. got fouled the other night, yeah, he's like, like on his knees. There's or stuff. so many good LeBron memes. Did you see yeah. when, Ky- when the Kyrie Mavericks news came out? He tweeted. He said, "Maybe it's me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He tweeted, maybe it's me. Yeah, LeBron did, like, right when the news came out. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. But he just so dramatic. Yeah, he, he, you're so right, though. Good. He but, is dramatic. All right, so hold on. Actually, let's let's do another one. This is another GOAT who just retired. I, and this is probably the way I would go if I was in a position like this. How I'd want to be delivered in scene is a dude like J.J. Watt. J.J. Yeah. Watt never fucking was, you know, he had, like, the corny, like, the rock workout stuff, but whatever. He had a bunch of little kids watching him. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. But he was so fucking dominant on the field, he didn't have to do, like, anything else. You just knew J.J. Watt was going to dominate. You had to fucking basically, st- st- like, run your whole game plan around how the fuck were you going to stop J.J. Watt, and he would still fucking beat you. That's probably how I would have liked mm. to have been viewed. Through a three- to five-year period, you couldn't. Do anything against him. His brother's not far off that at this point, but yeah, it's, but it was savage. even but he was even more dominant at that time. Yeah. I agree. Which I in honestly like I think that's good. I would rather you know probably have a three to five because this is, he basically had like three or four seasons where he won like three defensive yep. player of the years. He was hands down. The he best. was hands down the best, and then injuries took him off. But like you still knew that he was JJ Watt. I would rather have a short condensed career that was really fucking good, got the most out of it. Go down that way, then you know, dragging it out. You know, maybe some Have game like that don't. Okay. Maybe, maybe yeah. some game that don't play. I'm just not as dominant as used to was, but you know, mm-hmm. I'd rather go out on top. Hmm. For everyone, I like Cole's uh, thought process on it. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably go three that to way. five. Yeah, go ham. Yeah, that's your track career. Went ham, got out. Yeah, basically. Try yeah. what? Yeah, I'm going the the Kobe Jordan route, and, and something that doesn't get spoken about Jordan because. I don't know if it was fully his decision, but he left basketball to go play baseball. He went to go chase. He did. Dream. He slowed up his momentum that after his dad passed. That is very true. Yeah. If you watch the Last Dance, mm-hmm. it it really sheds light on like what his father passing meant to him. Mm-hmm. And I was <clears throat> yesterday being my birthday, I was watching Space Jam because it was my favorite movie growing up. Okay. Like, okay. And he, Same. In, in the in, in the <laughs> yeah. first scene, he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna play in the NBA, and then I'm gonna play baseball like you." Yeah. And I mean, he did, which is yeah. crazy. The fact that. I mean, even this, the fact he hit like 240 and hit some home runs, like what? That, that, it's crazy. I mean, this guy's been a basketball player his whole life. Imagine being a, a power for your whole life, and they're like, "All right, G, you're gonna go shoot uh, free throws in, uh, yeah, you know, an NBA level. game." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I'd make him though. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, dude. What'd you already say? Yeah. Already. Um. Yeah, I'm a Kobe well, MJ. Yeah. So I, I all. I've always really liked the Deion Sanders, Bo Jackson vibes because that was a short condensed. Deion's was longer, but the, the dual purpose for the period of time was only a two to three year window. So Deion only played baseball and football together for a few years. Same as Bo. Bo's career was only like three years, right? Those guys were both such freaks. And still to this day, you say either name, you know, these are guys are just unbelievable athletes. Um, the What's interesting is they were... Dion wasn't great at baseball. Bo was an all-star at both. He just got hurt. So Dion was obviously, like he said, what he said the other day about like the Hall of Fame. He's like, they're letting too many people in. Like my jacket needs to be a different color. Mm -hmm. Like I fuck with that. (laughs) He said his jacket needs to be a different color because he was a person who changed the game. Kind of agree with that. Such a wang move. Yeah. Yeah. He said it with a fucking straight face too. He fucking believes it 1 million percent. Um, but also, it's like, I understand, like, I don't know that LeBron, so if you think about his championships, I don't know that he was taking a bunch of time off in the early days when he was losing them. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if after that started happening, he then shifted as he just got older, thinking, well, I'm going to play the long game to be able to achieve 
So I guess my point is, I don't know if that was his mentality early in his career. I think it was the same as Kobe and, and, and Jordan, but I think then he thought, okay, well, I'm 0-3 or 1-5 or whatever the number is. If I can't make it a period of time, then I'm not going to be in this conversation. I think, this is just my own opinion, I don't have anything to back it up, I think it shifted to, okay, I can play this for way longer than these guys. Obviously, Tom Brady's narrative, all that. And then I can get in this conversation because I am going to get us three, four, five, six. I got to stay in longer because I'm not having this Montana four for four, Brady seven for ten. Like, it's just not happening because of my situation. Mm. So I think it's long game because that's what it needed to be. I don't know if it was a distinct, like, oh, I'm a killer, of, and then I'm in and out. I just think that wasn't his path because it just didn't happen that way. The other thing about LeBron that the other two, re- they, they did have it, but it wasn't to the same level of teams had to change the way that they were constructed if you wanted to stop LeBron. Mm. Like you had to build a super team to stop him. The Golden State Warriors had to go sign Kevin Durant in order to not beat LeBron, yeah. which is absolutely fucking incredible. Yeah. I mean, imagine in the NFL – the Dolphins go sign Peyton Manning, and then they bring the best defensive players and the best running backs. They basically have to create an all-star team to beat Tom Brady yeah. every year. That's crazy. I mean, the Warriors had to create an all-star team to beat LeBron. Which is why we're not talking about Kevin Durant being the best ever. Exactly. Which kind of sucks mm-hmm. for him, but that's the truth. Because people think he gave in instead mm-hmm. of just staying in OKC and winning one eventually. Mm-hmm. So... And, and, and probably, so, probably why he's got five burner accounts and he's always talking shit on people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, no, that that makes sense. I mean, they had to create all-star teams to beat him because he's that great, mm-hmm. which then, you know, hurts his perception of... He also had to create an all-star team, though, to win. Facts. In Miami. Yeah. You're right. I mean, that started being everywhere, though. Yeah. Anywhere that's winning was having, like, three all-stars on, so... Yeah. But so. the NBA, well, like, the NBA also switched, though, like, that, like, and... Because that was, what, 2011 was the Kobe was the CP3 to Lakers trade was supposed to go through, but David Stern... Yeah, blocked it. Blocked it to not create all-stars. And then the following year, LeBron went to the Heat with, yeah, wonder how with that Wade happened. and Bosh to create an all-star team. He basically was so like, oh, he's like, fuck course. you, Chris Paul. Oh, LeBron, you're good. That basically like changed the course of the NBA, like how yeah. teams are structured, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think the decision did a lot for LeBron's career, too, because in the first time in his life, he was a villain. And he had never experienced that. So I think it edged him up a little bit. Then he realized how he had to – he needed to go back to Cleveland to get his get it back. Yeah. And then he delivers on it. Then he's now – now he's hometown boy again. And then obviously all the things he's done outside of basketball with the school and all these amazing things. It's like unbelievable. But that shift, I think, was almost necessary to be like, oh, wait, I am fucking sweet, but I fucked this one up because it was fucked up for sure. And then to come back and have the vindication of what he did is pretty cool, actually. It's it's okay to be a villain for a little while sometimes. I don't mind if I have to play villain for a short period of time. Well, yeah, you got to switch it up. I mean, WWE, yeah. those characters get stale, bro. They're like, I'm yeah. trying to do something else. Yeah. Like, let me get I mean, like, what's the, the villain in He-Man? You guys are too young. But I know. Oh, oh fucking, Skeletor. Yeah. Danny Shira. I'm Skeletor. Okay. You're is, 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 Danny the, <laughs> is Danny the dude that's on the fucking big tiger thing? Is no, that what it is? she ruts the girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. knew what I was talking about. It's well, a chick name, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. she What's the big tiger's thing name? I think it's He-Man. Is that He-Man? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the flow? Yeah, this thing's sick. That dude looks like Michael O'Hearn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where we go from here, Cole? Yeah, I don't know. That was good talk, though. It was good. Yeah. I feel like this was like like in depth sports talk, not just like normal sports talk, yeah. not surface talk. Um, well, while we're talk, like let's just talk about like where we think all these big free agents are going. Well, actually, I just want to like know what's your guys' thoughts on uh, Kyrie going to the Mavs? Because mm-hmm. then, uh, what was the whole shit that went down where they weren't going to let him go to the Lakers? Well, the was he trying to go to the Lakers? Yeah, yeah. that was his preferred destination. But yeah. the Nets owner was like, "I'll send him wherever he doesn't want to go." Oh, they just said. Yeah, what Yeah, what was going on with they that? They just like, fucking, people just don't fuck with Kyrie after like one or two years. Kyrie fucked the organization, right? He he comes Kyrie in. Kyrie fucks everyone. Yeah, he I know. Yeah. And he's a kid. Yeah. So what do you do? So, so he comes in, you know, he's sitting games. <clears throat> There's a lot of off-the-court stuff 
that yeah. Kyrie's a really good manipulator, right? I watched his press conference yesterday, and all the media outlets, oh, Kyrie's the first person here. Oh, he's the first person practicing at the game. And he's talking, oh, man, you know, I was really disrespected by the organization. Mm-hmm. I just want to show my talent. Bro, shut the fuck up. Yeah. You've been tweeting shit, you know, very, very, like, abusive, hateful shit yeah. that is very directed towards one group of people, which is not cool at all. And then you're going to play, like, you didn't do anything wrong. And – you know, he forced the organization to trade him after he said he wasn't going to. You go back to the Cleveland interview after LeBron, you know, did his whole thing and Kyrie's the guy in Cleveland and the little kid asks him, oh, are you going to leave? Oh, I'll never leave you. Well, then he goes to Boston. Oh, I'll never leave you. Then he goes I went to Boston too. Yeah. And he just does it everywhere he goes. And so, yeah, it was a big trade piece, but it doesn't really excite me. Luka's a generational talent. I think it's probably more detrimental to Luka to play with Kyrie than it is. Gonna help if him. Kyrie gets his shit together, they're going to win a chip. Absolutely. Because Luka is, like, better than Larry Bird. Yeah. Because it's the best, two best point guards in the game. Correct. And they both can fucking shoot. So, yeah. And, yeah, and dude, imagine here's, point guard shooting. Here's my to, like, point on this. I no. think if anybody can keep him in check, it's Mark Cuban. Yeah. Mark Cuban, yeah. That's because what Mark I Cuban that's what I is a deal. fucking – first off, he's a celebrity, too. He's, he's not like the rest of these other owners. He's a fucking confident – killer himself he's not going to get pushed around by Kyrie yeah I bet he loved getting Kyrie in that deal I agree because I think it's juiced him up yeah so I think Cuban will be the one because he knows if I can manage this guy I'm a win yeah so (laughs) I think that's what's gonna happen yeah Yeah, and Cuban's definitely not afraid of him no like you know what I mean like he's not Kyrie's money ain't big get the fuck out of here bro definitely not scared even if these other dudes got more money than Kyrie they ain't gonna step to him Cuban ain't scared of that dude yeah. So I think he's in the right situation because of the ownership. Well, Cuban has all the power, too. He can be like, all right, Kyrie, see you later. And then it's like, okay, well, you've been on four different teams in the past three years. Where are you going to go now? Well, eventually, yeah, that'll run up. People will just stop taking chances on you. So he's got to, in his mind, at some point, figure it out. Either I'm going to – Is Steph better than him? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you guys think? Steph Curry. Yeah greatest shooter yeah but not the stuff outside of Kyrie but like if you had to pick yeah. one or the other stuff yeah yeah nah I'm going Kyrie see I Cause, wonder because uh, they, their skill set Kyrie are, is ball handling skills is unbelievable just, yeah. but He's Steph's is not far off but his their shootings are both like obviously Steph's shooting also like but Steph's like great you know it's yeah. like the same shit with like how I feel about Patrick Mahomes He's too like McDonald'sy. Like Steph Curry's too McDonald'sy. He's, he gives me too like so weird I, soft I used vibes. to I used to think that, but not anymore. Ah! Why? Steph Why? Curry's a top ten know. player of all time. Yeah, no, yeah. no. I'm saying like Patrick Mahomes is like fucking like Steph got three or four rings. Three. Okay. I'm just saying like Patrick Mahomes gives me because of his like outside drama and he's like still like young and he's still like is like a McDonald's <laughs> kid. I get that same vibe with Steph Curry. I'm not Are you saying, saying not Kermit good. the Frog? Because he sounds like Kermit the Frog? Uh no more like the Hamburglar. <laughs> okay. yeah. You know? yeah. Uh but that's how I feel about Steph. So that's why I choose Kyrie because I again fuck with the villain arc over the McDonald's arc. I can't wait till you post this clip and then he comes in your DMs and be like, fuck you, Cole. I, I make $500 million. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'll go, all right, you're still whack. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's my duty as a fan to tell you that you're whack. Come on. Like, do something bad here. Kick, Come on. Uh, kick your brother off TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's amazing. All right, so, all right. So, we got here, actually, uh, while we're talking about NBA, give me, can you give us, like, a little NBA rundown? Like, what's, like, who's the, who's the, best teams to watch what's like the best shit going on there's a lot of drama right now i so the trade deadline is tomorrow okay which is like when you should start paying like the first day you should pay attention to the nba is christmas day and then like middle of february so we have trade deadline is tomorrow and then uh next weekend is the all-star game this is when the nba starts to get good and you'll see espn start to like you see some stuff with like john Morant. apparently his like friends were like shining a red dot on some people at the Pacers game and they're okay. like oh it was attached to a gun and like oh, now it's like oh the so now they're because they they're searching for content now because yeah. I'm in the same boat uh, now with this being the Super Bowl week this is like the last like leg now I need to switch my focus into getting into basketball they're yeah, creating so. a bunch of the NBA is really good at creating storylines and like getting people because now the Grizzlies they're they're good, but they're struggling right now. But they're trying to create this narrative of they're like the new bad boys Pistons. Like, yeah, Jaws, this Brooks off too. the – Yeah, Dylan Brooks punched Donovan Mitchell in the nuts. 
Yeah, he got I like suspended. That. There were two fights the last week in the NBA. Like it's starting to get good, but the Bucks are good. The the Grizzlies are good. Lakers are trash. Celtics still good. Celtics are yep. good. Celtics, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's there's no clear cut winner. So the trade deadline is going to be good, especially for LeBron. Um, they can make a move that makes him a, a title contender. Who who do they need to get? Who do you think they need to pick trade up? Trade Russ. Uh, they need to trade Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Uh, because he literally can't shoot. But but he does Don't a lot say of. That's a Chad plan. I know, but he can't. I watched the game the other night. Like they were just leaving him open. But what he does really well in what <laughs> what they they figured it out with letting him run the second unit where he just is the guy that gets down court because if you watch the game last night right they're down by nine and the only person who gave a fuck was russell westbrook yeah no like, he plays hard he i'll plays never hard. take that away and and i've been <clears throat> studying a lot about kobe bryant recently and he talks about uh when kd and russ were together in oklahoma city uh, he called Bill Simmons, and he's like, this team is not Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's soft. It's Russell Westbrook's team. And his mentality is the exact same mentality I had, which is why I fuck with Westbrook yeah, yeah. over anybody because he's the same as Kobe. Um, but he was the only one fighting. But he does have a lot of limitations, and he's older. His career trajectory reminds me a lot of Allen Iverson yeah. where it's like, all right, dude, I love watching you play my whole life, but you just aren't the same player. Yeah. Um, could he shoot better or, or no, he, he's never screw. been able to shoot. He's kind of like me, just a freak athlete, but can't oh, shoot. Yeah, exactly. He goes hard <laughs> in the paint. He, he, he takes over the games. Yeah. yeah. Dri- dribbles right. a lot. Yeah. 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 Dribbles, dribbles the, dribbles dribbles the, the air out of the ball. <laughs> Lo- loves to talk shit. Loves to talk yeah. shit. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Lower the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Don't know if I'm playing football or basketball, but. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Great comparison. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they need, to, they need to trade him. Okay. But there, there's some crazy stuff that could happen. The Mavs could go all in on Luka and they become a good team and. There's a lot of cool stuff that could happen in the NBA. Yeah. Mm. Sick. Goat and sports show. We haven't done one of these ever. We haven't just talked about sports. This is fun. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. While we're on this, let's talk about where, you know, Aaron Rodgers, another goat talk. Do you mm. think he's done or is he coming back? What do you think is going Titans. on? Did you see what he's doing? His four day. Thing. Yeah. I saw that. His four day thing. Weird. Did you see that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's going, he's going dark, like literally dark for four days. See, that's why. Well, why? I, so he can, he's, he's in so there. So he can think. He's, weird. he's about to go do ayahuasca. You know he's that's definitely, what he's, he's definitely doing. You know that. that's what he's doing. He said on the Pat McAfee show. I don't he's, think he's washed his hair in a fucking year. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he's dude, he fucking ball. went and uh, won the fucking pro am uh, yeah. golf tournament. Did he? Yeah, him Where, and uh, Pebble Beach. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Jake yeah, Owen just played. Beach, in, yeah. yeah, Jake yeah. Owen just played in that too with he, uh, Jordan Speed. And he's yeah. dating a witch. Is he? Yeah, she's like, she like. <laughs> Wait, I haven't Shut seen this. Hold on. Yeah, give, like, what's the rundown? I, this is when he went on the How do you I know all this stuff, yeah. Treadway? I just, I listen to sports I, on radio. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, so he was on the Pat on McAfee TMZ. show. I turned it on. I didn't finish yeah, it. That's where I, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. So he was talking about going on this trip. He said he's going to go to a small like cabin or house or something yeah. and stay by himself for four days. But when he went on that ayahuasca trip, he was talk- He went on it with his girlfriend. And like there was this big thing about like she thinks that she's like a a witch. I don't awesome. know what that consists of, yeah. but it's pretty on brand for Aaron Rodgers to date a witch. You know, I, I, I really Ride like Aaron Rodgers. Magic broom. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of There's his Aaron names. Rodgers yeah. book club. Danny, you should look up the Aaron Rodgers book club, but some of the stuff he talks about, you can tell he, he He's knows he likes the, you know, higher level spiritual thinking. philosophy thinking but he also really buys into like he's like that's his narrative now I'll say oh he's, yeah. like, he wants he's to be no he's in he, it he yeah. likes the he like he, he buys into the fact that his whole persona is like him doing ayahuasca everyone thinks he doesn't give a fuck about football he found that, his character for yeah, he's, sure he's I got that, that and he keeps buying into it. it's really good he went on a rant where he said he enjoys being the villain he, he enjoys that everyone thinks he's like washed up he doesn't care and all this stuff but but I, he could easily get on a team and win another title. One million percent. Like there's He's nothing so good. Again, there's nothing that that if you watch him, you're like, oh, he doesn't got it anymore. He was literally playing with a bunch of like young wide receivers. They didn't really have that much talent. No. And I think like with all the drama around like his head coach, the office and shit like that, like I he probably just doesn't want to be there. No. So he puts on the front of like, oh yeah, like really care. But you go trade Devontae, Devontae's gone. You get rid of his main dude, and then yeah, like I mean, then you draft another quarterback like in the first round yeah, underneath of them. Like, come on! I get they were trying to go for the uh, far Rogers, Rogers thing, thing again, yeah. but it's not the same. No, nah, it's bro. not the same. You have Rogers. Yeah, you drafted one offensive player the entire time he's been there in That's the first a crazy round, stat. and it's a quarterback. 
Yeah. That's what? crazy. Like, that's, stat. like, disrespectful. So, I think they're doing my man Rodgers wrong. I would like to see him, you know. He's going to Tennessee. Whoa. I would love to see him just say, fuck it, go to the Bears. The Bears trade Justin Fields <laughs> for something. He goes there. Now, uh, I would love to see the narrative. That'd be so funny. I would, yeah. yeah, and I would love to hear Big Cat's reaction of what. Oh, Aaron yeah, because he's always been a hater. He, he rivalry. literally thinks he, he says he owns in prison. The, in prison, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he says he owns the Bears. I own you. That's the most. That's that's awesome. That Favre did the same thing. He went to the Vikings. He did. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that, I think that would be great. And the Packers are dumb enough to fucking do something like that, too. So. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, might be some good stuff. I'm trying to think, what other? You can cap it with the Super Bowl, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's cap yeah. It with the Super Bowl. Trey, who's your Super Bowl pick? Eagles. Yeah, all day. Eagles all day. Trey, what? Bird Gang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cole. Uh, you know, my heart wants to go Eagles. I'm going to be rooting for the Eagles, but you know, I think I, again, I'm on the NFL is a fucking side by side comparison to the WWE. <laughs> they're creating all these storylines. They're doing all this shit. There's no way they're not going to want, you know, no, their number one world heavyweight championship team, the fucking, uh, Kansas city chiefs in Patrick Mahomes. Cause he's like a he's little the fucking star player. Yeah. He's and all the kids love him and shit. There's no way they're not going to want him to win. So unlike the uh, Bengals game where you saw a shit ton of flags and a shit ton of unnecessary flags, I think they're gonna let these guys play physical, and I think it's gonna come down. They're gonna want they're gonna want a high scoring game in the Super Bowl. Everyone across the world's gonna watch it, and I think it's gonna come down to a lot of dumb. If they throw the ball deep and shit like that, they're gonna throw pass interference so they just move down the field faster. Mm-hmm. So I think it's gonna be a high scoring game, and I think the Chiefs are gonna win because of the refs. I hope that's not the case, but uh, I'm Team Jalen Hurts right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you can root against him right now. I would agree with that, especially with his story. So, so my my argument is that same thing is I yeah. think the NFL is gonna to want to propel Jalen Hurts to a superstar level because I think he is one, and I think his dialogue, his team talks, the way he operates, his college story of. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then ended up in the Heisman voting both years for two different teams. Like, the guy's an absolute stud. He really stays in the middle, too. He doesn't, like, get fucking nope. super over the top or super down. I, I think just, I think he's just not, you know, he's just not looked upon like a Mahomes, obviously, yet because he hadn't won. But I think he will be mm-hmm. if he wins. And I think his story might even be better than Patrick Mahomes, uh, honestly. Yeah, so, like I think. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I, th- I think I think they're going to – I think they're going to boot – I th- do think it's half rigged, but I think they're going to boost him up to a, to a superstar level. There's definitely some storyline shit. The they, they know they the, know what they're doing. It's the script's not, already out, bro. The yeah. Now, it seriously, ah. now I can't. I'm not going to come out and say <laughs> I fully believe the NFL is rigged. Yeah, they know exactly yeah, yeah. what the score is going to be. They want them to do this, but there's definitely just how in wrestling they have their narratives that they want to push because it's all about the money. That's what yeah, it comes down to. They want their number one guys to go up and do all this stuff. There's some influence on the field. We got breaking news. What, what is it? <laughs> and Rogers retire. Well, I don't know if this is true, but it says that the this guy is verified and he's from the Raiders. But it says the Raiders uh, traded their car to the Saints. Mm. Good spot for him. Yeah, that is good, a good spot, spot for, him. for who? For what? Like a pick? Uh, <clears throat> well, if you believe this, this guy's a Vegas Nation reporter. Um, and it says that it hasn't come out yet, but uh, like the the compensation, but they've agreed to terms to trade Eric Carr to the Saints. Did you see? Uh, he was at the Pro Bowl, and I think it was in Vegas, and he like balled out in one of the things, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah." He, Ryan Clark asked him about, "Have you ever been this hot in Vegas?" And he goes, this "Must not be. That's why I'm going somewhere else." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were dying because it's so truthful. Like, yeah, he's like, "No, have you ever been this hot in Las Vegas?" <laughs> yeah. So bad. What uh what's your guys' thoughts on uh uh Russell Wilson and the Broncos? Oh yeah, Sean Payton just signed. Yeah, there, did right? you see where Sean Payton basically they asked him uh <laughs> about whether or not Russell Wilson's gonna have like uh if he had any say in like who the head coach was, if he's gonna have any say in the offensive sh- like anything like that, and Sean Payton goes that's not how we operate here. Like he basically a hard and even the way he said it, it was like a hard no, I ain't putting up with any shit. I don't even feel like this is my perception. Russell Wilson's even that way. He didn't come off like a diva to me. But if I'm him and I I lay another egg, I'd say just move up into the mountains with Sierra. Bro, all right. So the whole, the whole McDonald's story, Russell Wilson might be the king of dumb – He's, Happy meal king. He's, he's the LeBron James meme king of the NFL. Okay. 100%. <laughs> way more than Patrick Mahomes. He's winning, bro. Like Broncos country, let's ride. Him saying that he does push-ups and shit on the plane. He doesn't sleep on the planes and shit like that. 
dude's corny. Yeah, no, he's corny. corny. Yeah. So, yeah, so I don't know how you're in the locker room, it, dude. Like, hey, also, with, also, future fucked his wife. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See, that's what I'm saying. That's fucked. There's up. no way like that in really the locker happened? room while they were married or about? before. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. is it the Gucci flip flop song? That's Pippin's wife. Everybody's been with Pippin's wife. <laughs> yeah. 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 Poor, poor Michael Scottie Jordan's Pippen. son is. Shut the fuck. Yeah, you up. see that? Michael Jordan's son is fucking Scotty Pippin's <laughs> wife, bro. That's just crazy that's to rough. me, bro. I feel like that's Jordan might have like said, "Hey, hey, Sonny boy." Pippin been talking way too much shit. That's Handle rough. that. See, I, that's a fucking weird triangle. <laughs> I, that's the triangle <laughs> offense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why the Broncos gave Russell Wilson that crazy ass deal, even though he like wasn't playing, wasn't doing that great. Mm. Um, they thought they were going to save like the franchise. Yeah, it was like two hundred fifty mil, and he. Yeah, it was just whack. It was like kind of worse than Deshaun Watson going to Browns. Whatever. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, that's, that's, a fucking, um, that's, a, that's a hell of a one, too. I have a theory that Russell Wilson's not that good. It, I see. No, that's that's exactly what I was about to All say. Right, so I, wa- I think I watched him win a Super Bowl in person. You think he's that good? I just think. But was it the defense? The defense, that was, defense really was really good. So good. They made because I went to the Broncos Seattle one in New York, where they basically absolutely smashed Denver, which was Peyton's first Super Bowl with Denver. And they looked like they were so much better. But I agree, the defense was really good. And he had a lot of good weapons because he had, what, fucking beast mode. And he had yeah, good and, and, and if you Carroll, if you bring yeah. it down to it. Uh, he might be a system guy. I think he is a system guy because in the Super Bowl against the Patriots, uh, obviously it comes down to Russell Wilson throwing an interception on the goal line, not handing the ball to Marshawn Lynch, who got them there. That's not his call, but still, that's yeah, pretty bad. If I'm Marshawn Lynch, I never get over that. No. no. I'd, the rest yeah. of, like, and I don't think he has. Like, I would never get over that. You gave you gave a ring to Tom Brady. You botched it. Yeah. You gave it to him. He looked, have you ever seen the video of, like, when that happened, how shocked Tom Brady looks? He was that about to cry because he knew he was, lo- he was he lost it. Yeah. I probably would have threw him up. That one feels different for sure. If I was oh, like, oh, and and you got to think like that. Darius game, Butler or whoever the dude was dude, that was a no name, like he should have got a Roly for sure. Yeah, dude, like <laughs> that saved everybody so life. good. Like that was like the beginning of like the Seahawks. Like could have been dynasty. Like they were running shit. Yeah, yeah. No one was touching them. It deflated could, them. It basically <laughs> ended because then after that, the whole team Deflate. they got in an yeah. argument with each other and shit like that <laughs> over that one play. It was terrible. Hmm. He's a system guy. But he's got a system going with Sierra, too. I'm just saying. So do other people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so does Future, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. Shout out to Future and Pippin's wife. Guys ready to be done? <laughs> yeah. All right. Roundtable podcast. Goat talk. Sports. Brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com. Shout out Sam Adams. Small Arms Danny. At Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Special shout out Tyler Treadway. Happy birthday. We are out.